Hey, what's going on YouTube? So it's Nathan back here with another one bringing to you a new video. So it's been a good little while since I've uploaded. I think it's been about two or three months since I've uploaded. So I'm back here with a new update, the Fire TV Cube 3. And I probably will do a review video, but I know the device has already been out for two weeks or so. So I'm going to hold off on that. So I'm going to go and jump right into some features for you. So the new features on the Fire TV Cube 3 and my eight or seven best features that this device does have to offer. So if you don't have this device, if you're thinking about getting it for Christmas, Christmas or Black Friday or either one of those when it does probably go down on sale um, or a semi sale since it is brand new so we're gonna go into some features I'm going to get right into it don't want to take up too much of your time so the first feature I have my Amazon Fire Stick loaded up the first feature is this input section so right now I do have HDMI plugged in and I have a USB device which will act as my media players. That's what those two inputs stand for. Let me go ahead and turn on my Xbox so we can see what shows if I click on this HDMI button under inputs. So I turned on the Xbox. So on here, my Xbox does need an update, but as you can see, if I click on that HDMI, this is my Xbox here. I'm not gonna update it right now because I don't feel like it, but it says turn off console. That means that I'm on the Xbox and it's just as simple as hovering over that input section and clicking on HDMI to get to my Xbox. That's how easy it is on the Fire TV Cube. So this is made easy because the input section. So if I go back to the input section, I can transfer back and forth so if I want to play the game I can play the game straight through my Fire TV Cube and how is this possible because the Fire TV Cube 3 has a new input on it which is called HDMI in which allows us to plug in a game console through our Fire TV and play it through it's not playing through the Fire TV but it's almost connected in a way that allows us to interchange quickly without having to disconnect wires and all that good stuff same for the media player how does the media player work so the media player i plugged in a usb device into the back of my fire tv cube once again on the fire tv 3 it has a new usb section before on the older models it had a usb micro sd um, but this one does have a regular usb port so if you're familiar with a few of my videos i've showed you how to plug USB devices to expand the storage using OTG cables. You don't have to do any of that with the Fire TV Cube 3. You just plug your USB directly into the back of it. You click on Media Player. I've already added videos here. You can see it's a Sandix USB device. If I click on this, this is just a media file of me in the Outer Banks uh, flying a kite and in the water just with my feet. Um, so just a family trip. It's a quick video, but that way you can load movies tv shows or any type of you know family pictures videos you can load them onto a usb device plug it into your fire tv and you can watch them directly on your fire tv using that media center so that's definitely cool so those are my two best features on the fire tv cube right now just straight off the bat let me give you the third best feature so the third best feature on here is if i go over to my settings if i go to the settings and go to applications like we used to with expanding the storage. If I go to manage installed applications and hover, you can see that the external space is already activated just by me plugging in that USB device. You can't see it, but my Fire TV Cube does have a USB slot. I have it plugged in there and I have a picture up here so I can show you what these ports look like on the back of the Amazon Fire TV Cube. So you can expand your storage right away. It doesn't get any easier. You don't need anything special, no special cords, no ordering anything off of Amazon. Just use that Fire TV Cube, plug your USB in, and you're all set to watch movies, TV shows, or expand your storage directly from a USB device. So that's definitely convenient. I'm glad they added that on the Fire TV Cube 3, and it's definitely a step up over any Amazon Fire Stick device out today. The fourth feature that they did add was speed. So we all love speed. This device is the fastest Amazon Fire TV device that you will find on the market, faster than the TVs that you see with Amazon Fire Stick built in, faster than the Fire TV Max, and faster than any of the older generation Fire TV Cubes. Why is it faster? 
um, mainly because it has an octo core processor in it which is two times faster than the previous model which was a hexa core processor i believe the fire tv max has a hexa core or quad core either one of those as you know you know quad is four hexa is six and then octo is eight so you have eight core processors in this fire tv cube device so so more is always better when it comes to speed so octo you know you can never have too many processors and the more you have the better your speed which means zero buffering on your part and very fast relay times when clicking on certain items in the fire stick or you know just maneuvering in general it does you know i don't notice the difference but you know if i had a side by side comparison which i may bring a video to you on that just so i can show you it may be a few milliseconds faster or maybe a few seconds faster but i will tell you that you should not experience any buffering on this device if you have a strong wi-fi signal so that brings me to the fifth feature on this fire tv cube device you do have the ability to plug in an ethernet cord to your amazon fire tv cube if the previous models had this it's not a super major feature but it is nice to have on this device considering that it is the fastest device that they've ever made and now you can still plug in a ethernet cord to make it two times faster with a dedicated ethernet and internet connection for yourself instead of using wi-fi but another thing they have wi-fi 6 available on this fire tv cube 3 so the wi-fi routers if you have a wi-fi 6 router which i have a uh I have AT&T Fiber, so that router is a Wi-Fi 6 router. If you're not familiar, just go look at your router. It'll say Wi-Fi 6 on it if it does support it, and that way you can make sure that your Wi-Fi uh, can support your Wi-Fi 6 feature on your Fire TV. But if you don't have it, you shouldn't notice any speed difference. These are just micro changes, so you won't actually tell that it's faster unless you have a side-by-side -side comparison. No need to upgrade a device just to save a few seconds of time. It's not going to make a difference. It will make a difference if it was like minutes in time, but a few seconds, it's not going to hurt anything. All right, so the next feature, I believe this is the sixth feature that I have for you, and the sixth and the seventh feature is a all-in-one. So the sixth feature is this settings button so we have a new button on the fire stick remote um if you're not aware these remotes are huge on the fire tv cube so if you're not aware on the fire tv cube the remote is huge and let me give you a side by side comparison so this is the old remote and this is the new remote so you can see it's about 25 percent taller than the older remotes and why is it taller? Because they have these additional buttons here down below. So you got this new settings button. You may ask, what does it do? If I click on the settings, it does give us a quick launch. So before to get this menu, we had to hold down the home button for about five seconds and then we got this menu. But now it's just with one click, you can click and get that additional menu to access the settings or, you know, dim your screen or turn your device off or anything like that. So that's very convenient. The seventh feature is this recent button. We click this recent and you can click on any of the apps that you recently opened just a few minutes ago. It's very convenient, especially when you're uh, not trying to cycle through a bunch of items just to get to the recent tab of what you were just looking at. So that's definitely convenient. And there's plenty more features to be uh, talked about here, but I probably will make another video on some additional features that you have to drill down into. Um, also, the A feature before I let you go, the A feature is the ability to sideload. They did keep that feature. Um, so if you're not aware on my Fire TV, straight out of the box on these devices, the Fire TV Cube, you want to keep in mind that developer options is not visible. So straight out of the box it's not visible so you will need to enable that feature and the way you enable that is to go up to the about section 
and then you want to click on the button that says Fire TV Cube. You want to click on it seven times. Once you click on it seven times, you'll see it go down from seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then it'll say you're a developer. And then that developer option setting appears, which will allow you to sideload additional apps. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.